night everybody. I'm joined here by Rupert from Cycling Weekly's tech team and we're going to do a review of one of the most exciting bikes that came out last year, which is the Cervelo R5 Disc. So I was with Cervelo at the launch of this in sunny northern Italy, uh, beautiful mountains, because this is a climbing bike. It's Well, it's a GC bike, but it is Cervelo's climbing bike. So it's lightweight, perfect for the mountains where it was launched. And uh, it was really exciting to ride it, actually. I mean, yeah. just look at it. Like, it's a nice looking yeah. bike. It is a nice looking it's bike. gorgeous, especially in that colour. But it has lots of cool features. Cervelo did a lot of work on the fit of the R5. Right. They spoke to a lot of their pro riders, because obviously they sponsored Dimension Data. And they spoke to them and they wanted more of a pro fit, because people felt in the past that Cervelo's fit was perhaps not quite as racy as they would have liked. Yeah, the geometry tend to have quite high head tubes. Exactly. And they were quite high at the front end. So you often saw like uh, Garmin riders when they were riding Cervelo, they were always like rider Hagerdahl and stuff. We're using like minus 15 centimeter stems that were like, Absolutely. you know, looking ridiculous. But. So straight away, what Cervelo did was they heard that and they went, okay, so people need a much shorter head tube. So they slashed this right down. So the R5 obviously has the R3, so to put this into context, is a bit of a less aggressive bike. What they did was they just cut the head tube by eight mil. So that is eight mil shorter than the R3. So immediately it's far more aggressive for those people that want to be low down. You do feel it when you're on it. Similarly, they dropped the bottom bracket height. So it's 72 mil of bottom bracket drop, which is a whole lowering of the bike and they lengthened its wheelbase as well. So they made it a bit longer for that stability when you're riding at speed. So it's three things really there that they've done, which work as this perfect package to just make it so aggressive yep. and fast. What we really noticed when we were riding this in Italy on the descents is that it's like a Formula One car when you're going around corners. So apart from the geometry being completely revised, there's lots of other new features on the Cervelo as well. So one of them is Tire clearance is now massive on it. It's like, enormous, isn't it? I mean, there's 25s in this as it comes with 25s, but I mean, I've put 28s in it. Yeah. And even with 28s, there's space for, I reckon, 32s Definitely. I could get in it. So Cervelo say officially max tire clearance is 28. Cervelo did that to introduce comfort to the ride because yeah. they know that wider tires equals more comfort on the road, more absorption of that bit of road chatter. We've both ridden this bike quite a bit now. Yep. Yeah. Um, Let's get the bad stuff out of the way first. What, if anything, did you not like about it? Those through axles. Yeah. And we have spoken about this quite extensively. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. We, uh, we so, struggled with them, yeah. didn't we? The rat through axle system uh, is developed by Focus and is on Focus bikes. And it was also on the Merida Sculptura uh, disc when that came out. And in theory, it's supposed to be a really good system. It makes sense on paper rapid axle technology for wa faster wheel changes. Yeah. But we just can't get along with it. Like, it, it ends up being way slower than a normal bolt through axle. Yeah. Um, so we don't like that. We don't, we don't like, like that. rat through axles. No. We should zero. point out that this stem has um, a, like a, a specific top cap that you can see like integrates with the top of it, which means that it's not that well suited to putting spaces above it, which could be a potential disadvantage if you don't want to fully chop your steering. Yeah. You know, maybe you're playing around or you just want to give yourself that bit of leniency. Yeah. Or you maybe want to sell the bike again. There's another niggling thing that annoys me about the cockpit. Go on. Okay, and that is putting your Garmin on it. So, I mean, do you, I, I'm not sure, does Cervelo have, I'm guessing they have their own out front mount. They do, but I it's, think. Yeah. It doesn't come with the bike. No. So you have something else you have to buy, and a lot of people already have a Garmin mount. But it's one of those bars where you can't fit the Garmin mount it's next not to, the to the stem. Is it? No. So if you've got OCD, it's going to drive you mental. It does have OCD, <laughs> and it's been driving him mental. Same. I didn't notice it until he pointed it out. Yeah. And then I was like, it's like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> how did you find the bars? I didn't I, have a problem. With no, them, the actual bars are, are fine in terms of. Uh, the stiffness of the cockpit is good, and when you're out the saddle and you're levering and you're climbing, yeah. um, they feel really good. Or There's when no you're sprinting on them, flex. no, I feel quite I, comfortable. I, I found I, if you climb in and you're holding on to the like the tops there, yeah, 
for, I found they fit your hand quite nicely because yep. they're that flatter profile. The ergonomics of the bar are, are decent. Other things to do with the sort of general spec of the bike, you've got the, the tires on this bike. Now, if you were to get a bike of this price, which is, you know, it's over 7,000 pounds retail. Yeah, it's a lot of money. I'm expecting to get like really good tires. You like, want everything, you want you, the works. Really, you want don't you? Continental GP4000S tires, yep. right? That's what you'd get on competing brands, a lot of, you know. And this, you've got the Continental Grand Prix mid-tier tire, which kind of doesn't really match up with what this bike is and how expensive it is. First thing I did after a couple of rides is I swapped those tires out straight away for a different pair because not only were they not quite matching, you know, the rolling speed wasn't perhaps there, and the grip was a little bit lacking, but also I just found them to be really quite harsh. Mm. Added a really harsh ride to the bike. Um, and I spent uh, the first couple of rides just being like, and I just like couldn't get into it, couldn't get comfortable. And then actually I swapped out the tires and I found it was a big improvement. And similarly as well, the saddle, I've put my own saddle on because I, the, the one that comes with it, I, I know I've tested it before. Yeah, I don't get on with yeah. it. Um, but the saddle it, it came with is a, an Antares Physique R5, which again, is the kind of saddle that you generally would associate with bikes of around 1,500 pounds. Yeah. So, you know, other brands would give you a titanium, that's a steel railed saddle. It's physique's sort of entry level point, but you'd expect at least a titanium railed one on a bike that costs this much, so. Yeah, they don't quite match yeah. the GC classification frame. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's an uneven specking, isn't yeah. it really? What do we like about the R5? Other than those, I think I pretty much love everything about it. Yeah. It's such a good bike. Like to ride is just, it's just like, you're just grinning the whole time. Mm. And it's, uh, I think it does come down to that, comes down to the frame. It's so performance orientated that it's super stiff around the bottom bracket. So pedals, like climbing's great on it. Yeah. I agree. Love climbing. Lo I, I love climbing. Pedal right, so. strokes, just you just feel like you keep going. Yeah. And that'll be a little bit to do with the wheels. You know, there are good depths, good stiff wheels as well. You're just, like, you're just gliding along. Mm. So good. And it feels sporty and fast. And then on the other side, it's even better. Going back down the climb, it's just out of this world mm. fun. I, I agree. I think this is the... I'd say I, in the last six months, this is the best handling bike that I have ridden. Without a doubt. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on record and say, I prefer the handling of this to the Trekamunda. I just think the geometry is a bit better. Like you've got a bit more front center of the front you wheel have, as well. Yeah. And so I never had any issue with toe overlap. No. Um, which I sort of did on the Amonda a little bit. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, that 72 mil bottom bracket yeah. drop, you just feel like you can just flip the bike over. Yeah, your you're center of gravity corners. is just a yeah. bit lower, isn't and it? You're and you just it's like, just... you get a big sweeping corner, you just flip it over <laughs> and it just just goes like round perfectly. Yeah. There's no teetering on top of the bike. It feels like you're just just like perfectly centered on the bike. Like perfect. Yeah. So much fun to ride. Yeah. Ride characteristics of the frame are absolutely brilliant and that is the heart of what makes this bike uh, really good. So all in all, I think frame wise, it's it's got to be one of the best frames out there at the moment. Yeah, We've right. only talked about the frame so yeah. far, but I mean, there's also, you've got a SRAM ETAP group set on this particular model, uh, SRAM ETAP HRD, which we've reviewed previously. And I mean, yeah. it's great. We love it. Um, we it's a brilliant group set. I, uh, yeah, I really like it because you feel like a Formula One driver. Yeah. Because you like, it's like flappy paddle shifting. Yeah, yeah. Which, in my mind, is a perfect complement to a Formula One frame. I mean, I rode the HRD SRAM hydraulic disc brakes in the Oak Route, slamming them down mountains for a week. You know, I mean, that's a really good test of the product. Yeah. And it performed flawlessly. And then now, I've put it through a British winter. And it, there's, I've had no issues at all. Yeah. Um, it's just a brilliant group yeah, set. Yeah, they are. It is great. And the zip wheels work really well on this bike as well. Like, there's no real reason to upgrade them, I'd say. I mean, they've, they've got that right. There's a, the standard of the wheels is good. Overall, what's your sort of verdict on the uh, R5 disc? We listed those niggles at the beginning, but when you actually ride the bike and it's how much fun you have when you're riding it and descending on it and climbing on it, yeah. you, kind of, you just kind of forget 
about that because yeah. it is a joy to ride. Yeah. On the whole, the core of the bike, which is the frame set and the group set and the wheels, is yeah. like is is absolutely superb. So, and for you know. Cervelo to make such a drastic change from what happened before and to absolutely nail it as well, yeah, is just like it's really super impressive to see. Yeah. And the most important thing is it looks totally badass as well. It really does. <laughs> Right, well, we hope you found this review useful and informative. And if you did, then why not like the video and subscribe to the Cycling Weekly channel to see more videos like this in the future. And while you're at it, why don't you comment in the comment section below and tell us anything that you'd like to see reviewed in particular as well. And then uh, we'll do our best to try and review it. So until then, see you later. Ciao.